Hey everybody, this is Liz from Delaney and Sons and we have a special guest today, Lars Jacob from Lars Jacob Wing Shooting. And I brought him here today to talk about the difference between an over under shotgun and a side by side shotgun. Now I have both, fortunately, um, and I think I shoot well with both. I mean, I, I miss probably <laughs> more than I hit, but that's not the gun. That's not the over and the side by side. But um, I wanted to introduce you, Lars, and uh, if you could tell a little bit about yourself, and then if you could answer my question, that's the big one. That's what's the difference between an over, under, and a side by side? Yeah, well, you see, this is almost as much of an argument as politics and religion and many other things. It will never, ever be agreed upon completely, but it is a fascinating debate. Uh, I've been in this business for 30 years or better, and in the, in the collecting, the sales, the gun fitting instruction um, uh, for a long, long time. And it's uh, how I grew up, and now I'm very fortunate enough to uh, make it my business as well. And uh, so uh, it's, been, it's been a world of fun, and it's been getting, getting more and more fun as I meet more people, enthusiasts like you and Sean has been fantastic for us all. We have a lot of fun together in, in this uh, shotgunning world. Um, love the older guns, so I love this topic because the side by side was the the first of the two of the over and under side by side that came out, and the reason was is not because someone thought that this configuration would be better than this configuration. It was due to necessity of design. Uh, the thing about when we started building these side by sides is that we were at a time where uh, tooling and metallurgy was still quite primitive, so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, so we couldn't really get small refined parts. And that's what happens. And I got a, a beautiful little old Purdy here. It was actually a, um, a uh, 1953 Purdy muzzle loader, okay. uh, Damascus barrels a whole bit that was converted in the uh, late 1870s uh, by into a break action hammer gun, 12 bore. And this is a great example because of the exposed hammers to show you what I'm talking about as far as side by side and the tooling. What we have here is a shotgun shell with a primer in the middle. The function of the lock mechanism, all that's in this gun, is to eventually strike that primer with enough force to ignite the shell and fire. So we have two locks, the right side lock, the left side lock, and we have the right barrel, and the left barrel. Both the side locks are side by side and both the barrels are side by side. So what that means is everything that happens in that lock is running all on the same plane. It never changes direction, okay? The hinge of the trigger, the pivot of the sear, and the fall of the hammer are all running on the same plane. And even the strikers that hit the primer are all running on that same plane. So what we have is a very efficient gun uh, for uh, consistent firing because you've got all that energy. What we have with it over and under is if you just look at the over and under barrels, we have now barrels stacked on top of each other. So whereas in the side by side, the two locks are dead centered to the bore of the barrels. Now you have locks that are side by side but barrels that are over and under. So now the hammer is not behind dead center of the bore, but off to the side. So now we got to take this energy of the lock mechanism, and at some point it's got to change direction to make that to hit that primer and fire. In the old days, they didn't have the ability to produce smaller, tighter, more compact springs to allow that energy to go all the way through and fire the shell because it has to change direction. As that hammer falls, it actually hits the striker on an angle, not square on. And that striker has to then move from that angle to hit that primer hard enough to fire. So as much as they wanted to build over and unders as quick as they could, they couldn't because they didn't have the tooling or the metallurgy. So what happened later is that we were able to produce small leaf springs. Because the other difference is, is that with a side-by-side, -side, you have all this space too in front of the breech to uh, put lock parts in. So that means the spring's bigger. In, th in this case, that pin right there is actually the pin that holds the 
the uh, spring, leaf spring, V spring in place. And so the spring is quite big in over and unders. You don't have that space available to you because we've taken up that space with the bottom barrel. So now all the lock has to be behind that breech. It can't be back here. So now we have a smaller area to contain our parts. So the springs had to be smaller. And it wasn't until they had the ability to machine with a little bit um, tighter tolerances, as well as be able to machine uh, to harder specs so that we got smaller springs giving out as much energy as the older, larger springs used to. Mm -hmm. And that's why the over and under came so far behind the side-by-side -side in evolution. So it was due to necessity that the side-by-side -side, uh, happened. The over and under was always in desire because, especially here in the, in the States, because we were rifle shooters first. Mm -hmm. So we always wanted a gun to duplicate that simple narrow sighting plane as opposed to the wide, more confusing to the subconscious sighting plane side-by-side. -side. So what happened is as soon as they did have the ability to produce over and unders, then they started making them because there was a strong desire for that narrow sighting plane. Now, when I say that, don't, don't think that you aim a shotgun, you don't. And people will say, well, I don't look at the gun barrels. Nobody looks at the shotgun barrels. You're not supposed to. But we have two parts of vision. You have a very small, strong percentage of focal vision, and then you have a large subconscious vision or peripheral vision. So yes, your small percentage of sharp focal never sees the gun barrels. It only sees what you're shooting at. But you are, you have a subconscious awareness of the gun barrels in front of you. Some people much more than others. Those that have a much more subconscious uh, reaction to the barrels, uh, typically the ones that have a more difficult time shooting side by sides. Because there is so much mass there that it can confuse the subconscious and suddenly distract that sharp focal vision. Mm -hmm. So. That was the major attribute to the over and under, the reason for it to become uh, desirable. But they both have tremendous attributes. Yeah. Well, is there a weight difference? The there is a weight difference. The side-by-sides in the same gauge are typically lighter, and that's because we have less mass, metal mass, because of that. And also with side-by-sides, we have less forend mass as well. We don't have the big mm -hmm. uh, fluted or beaver tail type forend. So you can see them on some side-by-sides and that's typically someone who wants that desirable bigger forend because they are familiar with that with their rifle shooting or with their over and under shooting. But the truth of the matter is there's an advantage to that small mass there. Not only are we reducing weight, but when you shoot, you're cradling the barrels in your hand, not the forestock in your hand. So that means this gun has a much more natural ability to point. And that's what we say, side-by-sides are natural pointers. What you're doing when you shoot a gun, when a bird flushes and you're shooting a gun, you are throwing your hands up into your line of sight. That's the instinctive nature that we're doing. I mean, whatever we apply afterwards, whether it's pull away or instinctive or swing through, it doesn't matter. But the first reaction of all shooting is an instinctive reaction. Mm -hmm. And so what we're doing is we see that bird and we throw our hands up into our line, line of sight because that's what we do. We make our hands follow our eyes. With a side-by-side, -side, there's a, with a straight English grip, with that slim forehand, your hands are in line with each other. So they naturally come up into your line of sight. Whereas with the over and unders, they have typically the bigger forehands, pistol grips, and they stagger that hand alignment. And so we don't have, they don't have the pointability, okay? So the side-by-side -side carries much easier because it's light, lighter, and it points much quicker. So a gun like this is perfect for your walk-up hunting, for anything that's really a reaction instead of a plan, where you know clay shooting is actually creating a plan and then applying it. The over and under excels for those shooters who love to keep the gun in front of them a little bit longer before they shoot, what we call riding the gun. A lot of clay shooters do that, driven shooters, duck hunters do that. And so that they have a little more awareness of the gun barrel where it's going to be to find that forward allowance necessary. So they want that narrow sighting plane of, a, of an over and under. They also want the heavier weight of an over and under because if they're shooting in high volume, they're going to absorb a lot more recoil with that additional weight of the over and under over the side by side. And of course, that full pistol grip that is common with uh, over and unders 
keep the wrist straight behind the hand as opposed to canted. So it's more relaxing for high volume shooting, but more importantly, it helps you absorb recoil even more. Mm -hmm. So the side-by-side -side is, is very, very uh, dainty and very reactive. And the, the over and under is, a, is all business gun. It's for real super high volume shooting. Yeah. So you would say just maybe a rule of thumb that if you wanted to shoot clays, if you're more focused on clays, then maybe the over under might be better for you. And if you are more focused on, you know, birds, uh, heading out to the field for uh, some wing shooting, maybe the side by side would be a better choice. I, I definitely would say that. I mean, I, I'll be honest with you. I'm one of those nuts that thinks that there should only be side-by-sides just because uh, I think they're just the sexiest configuration out there. They're a beautiful, beautiful gun. Um, but if I was worried about my scorecard on a sporting clays course, mm -hmm. uh, I would definitely be shooting my over and under because it's more suited for that game, which means that I'm not going to drop as many birds. Yeah. The side-by-side -side is just a wonderful, wonderful gun to, to, uh, to – Go out in the cupboards with when you're quail hunting, when you're grouse hunting, whatever. Because even though when, when we can't find the birds, like I said, it's just so much prettier to look at. Yeah. When I first uh, got well, when I first got my first gun, um, I remember every a lot of people were around and they said, "Oh, it's so pretty, it's so pretty." And I remember saying, "Well," and they asked me if I liked it, and I said, "Well, I'll, if I can shoot a bird, then and I hit it, then I'll like it." But now I see over the years that those side-by-sides are so pretty. And mm -hmm. I know I went to a Clay's event and I was the only woman that had a side-by-side -side and I was looking around saying, well, they are shooting better than me with the over-under, but I have a really pretty gun. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, um, that's, that's, they, are, they are part of this. What they really are is they're a part of the history of, of uh, bird hunting and, and that whole lifestyle that we so much love to uh, play in today. Yeah, and that was my next question. Why do the side-by-sides have such a following? Is it because they've been around for so yeah, long? Yeah, it's, it's a history. As long there's history, long I mean, granted, over and unders uh, did start coming up. The, the, uh, the Germans and the Austrians did a very good job of uh, figuring out how to build uh, over and unders. Um, but what, one of the main reasons why they're able to is they built a very large frame, mm -hmm. okay? Much, much larger frame than on the side-by-sides, which allowed them to accommodate with bigger parts. So they were able to, this is a wonderful little Greifelt right here, and it's actually, with all that frame and with 30-inch tubes on it, this thing is very well balanced and very, very fun and delightfully responsive, but it's a, it's a very, very lovely lovely gun but that's how they succeeded and it wasn't until we had modern parts and modern tooling that we were able to downsize that frame and get consistency out of how the gun fired yeah. so yes over and unders can be pretty too <laughs> yes yes well it's funny because here in the states i have my side by side and over the uk i have my over under so right. it's yeah. uh i think it should be switched but I just still enjoy shooting them both, and, um, and well, there's a lot of people who shoot both, and then there's a lot of people who just dedicate, you know, will dedicate to one configuration or the other. And then, yes, yeah, side by sides, I think have a, a a collective following, whereas over and unders probably have a a, a, a shooter's following. It's a, it's a more of a tool, so they think of it that way. Yes, yes. Well, it looks like you have plenty behind you. So if anybody wants to. Uh, have an over under or side by side, uh, they know where to go. Certainly, they can come and see you. Absolutely. Lars Jacob, wingshooting.com, and uh, 802 289 All right. Well, thank you for. Well, yeah. One thing I will say, though, Liz, is that I do believe it's much more important. I think it's important, anyways, to have a proper fit done, but I think it's very important that we do uh, have a gun fit done for a side by side more so than any other gun. Yeah, yeah, and we're going to talk about that hopefully with you in just a bit. Sure. Um, well, good. Well, thank you very much for that. Has always been a question of mine, and thanks for making me understand it a little bit better. Absolutely, my pleasure, Liz. All right. Bye bye.